All right, today we're going to be learning the steps in order to make our first assignment, which is going to be a spinning top. And today I have this uh, nice piece of birch that we're going to be preparing for putting on the lathe. One of the first steps is that the length of the, the piece needs to be somewhere between seven and seven and a half inches in length. Could be anywhere in there. And uh, the ends have been cut on the compound miter saw, so they're fairly parallel and square at the end. Now, we have a choice here is that we have these sharp corners and we can <clears throat> knock down those corners with a block plane to soften, the, to soften them so it's not quite as violent and as bouncy in the initial um, turning process. So, I'm going to install the block into the bench vise and I have a block plane here and it's adjusted. I'm simply putting it at a, basically a 45 degree angle and making a few passes to knock down those sharp corners. It's probably a good idea since this is the first real project that will be that you'll be making on the lathe and to have it not quite so bumpy in the beginning will be helpful. Okay, this side has a little bit of a radius on it so it's a little less easy to put a bevel on. Okay, that should be good there. Next step is to find the center of each end. And we can certainly take a ruler, measure half, make a dot, measure half, make a dot, this way and this way, uh, or, and, and, then, and then where the lines cross, we can do an indentation. Or, if it's fairly square or rectangular, we could use a straight edge and go corner to corner, and then where that meets, that is also would be a reference to the center. But however, an old timer showed me this, Mr. John Seagull, one of the founders of the Guild of New Hampshire Woodworkers, uh, showed me this, that if you use a marking gauge and you set the scribe up just past halfway, you can make a scratch like this, and then just rotate 90, rotate 90, and rotate 90, and you're gonna end up with a small square in the center. You can see that there. And with that small square, that's an average of your piece, especially if your piece has uneven sides. So, that's a, definitely a handy approach for when we're marking the material that we have harvested and milled ourselves. So I need to go this side. And then I need to increase the length here since it's this side's a little bit longer. And, okay. That was a pretty big stretch right there. And now I'm going and marking it. And I always recommend putting your thumb down and resting the scratch all on top of it because that stabilizes it for a nice accurate indentation and I, and I have that there. Yeah. Okay, the next step after marking out our piece is that we need to determine which end is going to go on the headstock side and then the tailstock side. And typically when you're making a project, ours is going to be the spinning tops, is that whatever the larger diameter of the piece that you're making will be on the headstock side. So I'm looking at this piece here, and obviously this side is a little bit larger than this end, so this end is going to go in the headstock. Before I do that, I'm going to set the speed of the lathe. Now the jet, this jet lathe is a manual speed operator. So we need to adjust the belts, which are in back, and I'm opening up this back door here. Okay, so with the jet lathe, it's, it's a pulley system, and furthest to my left, right here, this big pulley can have a, a chart indicates 500 RPMs. So that's the slowest that this lathe will operate. Right now it's on the third pulley, which is just over 1200 RPMs. So we cannot go from, large, from smaller to larger. There's a handle in the front, which I need to loosen, raise the white handle, that's going to allow slack into the belt. So I'm going from the bottom, I'm going from the big pulley, that's okay, big pulley on the bottom to the 
uh, yeah, from the big pulley to the small pulley on the bottom, and then to the large pulley on the top. I'm holding my finger here, putting a little pressure down on the handle, and I'm going to just allow the belt to walk on like that. It takes a little practice, and uh, you know, keep your fingers out of there. Then I'm putting some light pressure on the handle of the motor, and then clamping the clamp here securely so that the, the belt is taut and the motor will go around well, to the headstock. Closing it up, our next thing is I'm going to need, what I use here is our, again, spur driver. And this is the, called the Badger from John Seagull, Mr. Seagull from the Guild in Hampshire. Excellent design. We're fortunate here at Merrimack, we have one for each station. It goes on and has a protective sleeve. Next, tail stock goes back and I bring my piece over with the large size to the headstock, setting, lining up the dot, the indentation with the center of the spur driver. Resting my hand like so, I like putting my hand like, like this on the end so my index finger can reach over to the live center and then I grab my dancing partner here of the tail stock and now I can guide it very accurately in place. Put some pressure forward. I call it the Heisman Trophy and some and a push. <laughs> right there. Clamp needs to be released on the quill. Drive the tailstock into our part till the pressure of like taking a, uh, a lid off a jar. That's about as tight as you want it, or you'll see the tail stock start sliding backwards. Next, we want to set up the, ban the banjo. The banjo with the tool rest. I like to start on the right, far right hand side. We want the tool rest to be hanging over a, at least a half inch to an inch over the edge so that we can bring our tool all the way to the end of our material but not falling off the edge. I make sure that the tool rest is uh, at the center axis and approximately an eighth of an inch away from our part as well. Making sure the clothing, jewelry, face shield, we'll be wearing a face shield here. Uh, it's very, uh, we don't want any damage, any pieces coming off and striking you in the face. And all the face shields are numbered per station, one, two, three, four, and so forth. I'm spinning it like this once, it looks pretty good. I'm going to do a test turn, and that's same is pretty good. Okay, now that the part is securely attached to the lathe, now it's time to make our first chips. Is that you'll be using a roughing gouge, and that's on the far left hand is where we store it because with spindle turning, it's the first tool you use, and the tools are kind of set up in order in regards to what you'll be using throughout the uh, process of making a project. So this is uh, what we have for uh, each, each station here. This is my own roughing gouge, which I haven't used in a while, so I'm going to use this one for start right now. And actually, I'll use the spool up there because this is what you guys are going to be using, and it's fine. So I'm spinning like this. It's good. I'm going to be putting my face shield down just like this, right? Protect the face. We don't need any accidents. Turn it on. Hand goes, hand goes on top with about one inch worth of extension of the roughing gouge beyond your hand. Other hand at the base of the tool. A, B, C. You want to be anchored. Two feet. Tool on the tool rest. That's A. B. We find the bevel. Violent, but very safe. That's B. C is that we simply raise the handle so we hear a nice tick, and that's the chip, A, B, C. We roll to the right, and then we roll to the left. You can see that I'm not white knuckled here. We just have to hold this tool securely, but we don't have to have a death grip on it. I'm gonna tighten this down just a little bit more. 
because with that vibration, it does compress the cells in the part, so we do have some uh, increased vibration. So I started making some initial chips right here. I'm going to now slide the tool rest to the left and remove the sharp edges and the corners on this end. There we go. Turn it on. Anchor. Bubble. Cut. I haven't used mine in a while, I'm going to try this one. is that I've done some, a little bit of turning here and I've removed uh, many of the chips and now we have a cylinder here that's almost perfectly round. I do have a little bit of flat spot here which I'm going to remove shortly, but what the key is is that the rest of the cylinder, uh, the piece here is fairly round. I'm going to make a couple more chips and then what I need to do is my next step would be making a dovetail end because we're going to attach a chuck on here that's going to help assist us in the making of the two tops. Always make adjustments with the lathe off. I'm going to slide the tool rest over just for these final passes. Okay. All right, that's that's perfect. Uh, this is all we need at this point. Which I also love about this birch is we have some spalting, so we have this coloration in here, which is kind of spectacular. Next, uh, I'll be using my parting tool, and what's critical is that this end right here, where I'll be making the dovetail, cannot be anything less than an inch and three quarters. If it's less than that, we'll, we will not be able to fit it into our chuck. So, right now, I have my caliper set up at Take the ruler, I have it set up at just over two inches, it's actually two and an eighth, and I'm holding the calipers like this, proper way of holding it, and I'm going through and tightening it down so I just have ah, a little bit of friction, so I know it's just over two inches. That's perfect. It needs to be somewhere between one and three quarters and two and a half in order to fit on our Nova chuck. So next, I'm taking the parting tool, and the parting tool is just what its name is. It's separating one part of your design from another part. Now, the parting tool is one of the only few tools where we need to move the tool rest further back so that the flat spot of the parting tool is on the tool rest, not the bevel. The tool is never used like this, always vertical like so. I'm going to set it in here, and I'll be making a dovetail. The dovetail needs to be approximately 3 8 to a half inch in width. So I'm taking my pencil, and right about there is a heavy 3 8 
that's what's great about lathe turning is you can just do a little pencil mark and it gives you a fabulous visual. Now I'm taking my bevel, I'm resting it on top of the part, I'm bringing it back until the edge is engaged with material. It's all about sound. Listen. There it is. There's the chip. Now I'm pressing lightly in short segments. So we don't want the tip to overheat. So I've done about four or five, maybe there's six, seven segments. I'm sliding the tool over, and since I did about six or seven segments in regards to cutting there, I'm only going to be doing like four or five here, and then only two to three here. And you can, you can see from the profile, you can start seeing how this dovetail is starting to appear. So, I'm just going to clean it up gently. We don't want to go skate the tool back and forth. It's just light steps from left to right and then right to left. And what is my tool at? Probably about a three to four degree angle. That's about it. And there it is. So, I'm just, let's maybe you can come perpendicular to it. You can see what the detail. Okay, perfect. Nice. At this point, I'm going to attach uh, our work to the chuck. So, remove, set it here, take out the knockout tool, move the banjo and the tool rest, we insert it from the back, and then we push, holding onto the sleeve, hand out on the end. There we go. And so we don't want this falling on the floor. It goes back up in the rack. We take the chuck, hold it in your right hand, place it on the threads, and I want you to turn the tailstock wheel. Tighten it like so. This was the end with my dovetail. That's going to be inserted into the chuck loosely. Move the banjo over, grab your dancing partner right here, slide it forward, index finger, line it up perfectly with your indentation, clamp, clamp, and now tighten the, the tailstock into the piece, like so. Lightly three fingers, that's all you need for tightening the clamps, they don't have to be over tightened at all. Good. At this point, I'm going to spin it so everything kind of finds its place. Then we take the chuck key. And one thing that's interesting about these Nova chucks, it's not righty tighty, it's left. I'm going to go left to tighten it. Nova is a company that's uh, from New Zealand. So maybe, I don't know why they went left. They <laughs> Here we go. All right, make sure it's nice and snug. That's perfect. And you can also see that the dovetail is just above the jaws there, so nothing's nice and uh, complete. Yes, it is. All right, so now it's time to start laying out our work for the top. And we're gonna need a, about a quarter of an inch worth of waste. We're gonna have the mass of the top. We're gonna have the stem of the top. We're going to have some waste, and then we're going to uh, make another top here. So, let's get some marks. Okay? So, there's my waist. There's the mass. And then probably here is the top of the stem. A little bit of waste. And then we have the point, mass, and the top. Okay. So, Next, I'm going to set my tool rest in place. I'm going to be starting off with my parting tool and we'll make some cuts. So, I'm going to want to leave about three quarters of an inch uh, diameter. I don't want to make it too small so we need the enough material there to support cutting. So, going in with the, just taking the shield off in regards to the demonstration. So, I'm going to start here, 
Find the bevel, slide it back. There's the chip. I'm going to be pushing my elbow just like this. Once I get that chip, I push my elbow. The force comes in from my elbow like a pendulum on a clock, not the wrist. So, bevel, chip, into the elbow. Press, pause. Press, pause. We want to go a little bit wider than the tool because we don't want the tool to be trapped down into that slot. There it is there. Next, that's where the point's going to be. Here's going to be the top of the mass. Bevel. Chip. A little bit wider. Mr. Lucy, do you want to come this way? Thank you. So, tip, mass, stem. Now I'm going to go here is where the top part of the stem is. And you can probably see that the diameter of the front, the middle, and the back is pretty much all the same. That's good. While I have room with my tool rest, I'm going to make another cut here. <laughs> And next, I don't want to necessarily look at this as a manufacturing situation, but I'm going to make uh, this next cut here. So that's waste. This is my point. This is the top of the mass. A little bit wider. Then here's the top of the uh, step. Good. So now, all those are roughly the same diameter, and we're going to be going to the red handle tool, which is the spindle tool, and only be used with spindle turning and not bolt turning. Who knows? Okay, so we're going to use the spindle tool, red handle, and uh, Mr. Linsky, maybe if you can move on this side. <clears throat> so, all these tools, we have the flute, we have the bevel. We always put the tool on the tool rest. We want to find the bevel, and this is a perfect, perfect opportunity to start developing the technique of finding the bevel, rolling the edge, and making our first chips. This principle of cutting is related to all tools uh, for spindle turning as well as bowl turning. So, I'm going to start here on the outside so you can see. Let me just uh, move this just a tad closer, like that, good. And here's the bevel, right? I'm going to raise it till I hear that chip. There it is. Keeping the bevel up against the part, I'm just going to press really lightly and going around the edge. There it is. There it is. Going to make another one. And I don't know if you can see how I'm rolling the tool right there. That's really important. Bevel, chip, and then. The bevel's up against the part, and I'm rolling up on edge like this. If it was open, it would dig into the piece, and uh, it wouldn't work very well. So now we have this, this metal section right here that's going to be turned into waste. This is all going to be turned into waste because that's where the stem's going to be. So I'm starting in the middle. Bevel. Go to the right. Turn and roll so I'm not driving the tool into the top of the mass. Center again, chip, roll. Perfect. Now this is where we're going to get a lot of practice. Turn and roll. Turn and roll. You can see my left hand is barely moving. 
barely moving in the cutting process. Staying put. Now, I've just removed a lot of material pretty quickly. All right, so there's that stem. Go to the next one. So here's uh, the mass. Ooh, the stem's going to be over there. So I'm just going to be able to do the point. Good. Good. Okay, so I've just removed part of the uh, half of the material uh, from the stem of the first top. The second one's here. We want to remove most of the bulk of the material while we still have some decent diameters here in regards to rigidity so the piece is not flexing. So now I'm going to take uh, the spindle tool once again and now remove. Uh, the material from the second top stem and again this is perfect practice for developing the skills regards to riding that bevel on the material starting in the center and rolling to my right rolling to my left Start having a little chatter. Just pause until the tool cuts through that material. Don't try to force it. What I love, when you make a nice cut and you're riding the bevel, this is almost a polished surface. Right here, 220 sandpaper at most is all you're going to need to finish that, if that was part of your finished project. So, riding the bevel is... We always go from a higher diameter to a smaller diameter. Okay, now let's move over to the first top and we'll prep, prep this a little bit more. nose here just a little bit. Okay, time to make the stem a bit smaller. So I need to use the parting tool. And the parting tool is here.
Now, I know that this is waste, so if it's in the way, certainly bring it down. Nice, and now I'm just going to put, I don't like sharp edges, so I'm just going to gently round this over. Okay, and with our parting tool, we can add a little decoration. Actually, let me uh, clean this up just a little bit. I'm going to put two little racing stripes on it. Parting tool at a slight angle. Maybe three. Nice. Then back to my spindle tool. Find the tip. Pairing it back, layer by layer. Okay. okay, so at this point, the stem has been refined a bit. I uh, have the mass and we have the point. Now, the other thing I want to point out is that with the demo, I'm moving along here, but it's also important to keep an uh, a, a orderly workspace is I had some tools building up here on the table. I was using some of them on a regular basis, and sometimes reaching back and forth and back and forth, depending on your clothing, uh, with the lathe spinning can be a hazard. But at this point, I'm not using some of them on a regular basis right now, so please get your tools back into the rack so they don't fall on the floor, hit your foot, startle you, and cause an unsafe uh, work environment. So, also we can clean off any sawdust at any given time. Make sure when it's built up on the floor that you move it out of the way. You got brooms here as well, so that you have a nice secure footing on the floor. Now, my next step is that I'm gonna just do a little bit of sanding. Sanding, I know some people really enjoy it, and it is necessary, but you need to make sure that the tool, the banjo is out of the way, and ideally, I prefer having the tool rest completely off of the um, of the banjo. I'm going to turn it on slowly like this. I prefer not sanding too much on the top with one hand like this. It can get caught and then your fingers are put into the direction of the, of the spinning piece. So you can go like this. We never wrap the sandpaper around the piece. I prefer wrapping it like so. Elbows into your rib cage, bringing it up to the part and then doing a light sand. So I'm just going to get some of the fibers off. Because the birch is a, a beautiful material. We want to make sure it shows quite nicely. And get the back here. Clean that up just a little bit. Okay, and the rest of it should be pretty good because I had a nice, uh, nice uh, shearing cut with the spindle gouge. I'm just going to use one more here just to touch up. Perfect. Keep the sandpaper moving so it doesn't load up and then burn. That's good. 
Got a little bit on the front here. I just want to clean up ever so slightly. Nice. Good. And now we're going to be ready to uh, cut the point off. And I need to reposition the banjo with the tool rest. And next I need to pick up a small custom tool that we have a few of them here in the shop. All right, the next step, I've angled the tool rest. I have it close to the live center. And what I'm gonna be doing is just removing this last bit of material here. So we've made these. These are uh, made from Allen wrenches. They're about a dollar a piece and they're a wonderful little spindle tool where you can get into very fine detailed work. So I can come in like this and Now that's being held on by just a tiny, 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 tiny little bit of material. Good. So now what I'm going to do is to move back the tailstock. Actually, I'm just going to take it right off the table. Always lay it on its side with the handles facing up so it doesn't vibrate off the table. And at this point, I can now, and it may even come right off. Oh, still held on. Nice. So now I'm coming in with the tool. Look at that. It's just holding on like a baby tooth. There we go. Okay. Now a brief sanding. We don't want a too sharp of a point because then it won't spin very well. So I'm just going to clean up the end. Typically when we do sand a finished project we go uh, 120, 220, 320 and up to 400 grit sandpaper is the standard for finishing a lathe turning project. The demonstration here, I'm just doing a, a couple of those steps. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, at this point, we're going to put on a finish, and I'm just going to use some very basic walnut oil. And I guess I'm going to cut here, and we're just going to brush it on. And what's really nice about this is that you'll see the spalting. It's going to pop. It's going to look really nice. Look at that. And walnut oil is non-toxic, so it can be used on wooden kitchen utensils as well as cutting boards. Only uh, walnut oil and mineral oil are the two oils that should be used in a food environment on woodworking projects. Okay, how's it look? Looks pretty good. Okay, next, which is always a fun thing, is to now, we could either leave this on here, dry, or I'm going to, at this point, part the top off. So, I'm gonna get the tool rest as close as possible proper height, clamp it, and we have these very thin parting tools. I had, this is our standard 3 16 parting tool, and this is a much smaller one, so you can get into the closer spaces. Back up in the rack, don't cut these, and now this is where your forearm goes here, Got to be careful of the spinning chuck. That's why it's no long sleeves. And we'll be able to cradle the top as we part it. So, I know where my arm is. It's stationary. 
parting tool, index finger, has to, has to go on top. It can't be held like this because it's going to move. So it has to go on top. I'm kissing the side of my scrap piece and then very gently light touch, light touch, light touch. Small amount of material is still holding the top off. Look at that. It's like small as a toothpick. Now you got to put my thumb over the top, and then there it is. Okay. Take a little sandpaper, clean up the end for our first test drive. And let's bring it over to the table to take a look. What do you think? Ready?